another episode of Art New Vogue with your host, Leilani Joy. This is my video art blog where I document my creative process and give you guys some tips, tricks, and inspired looks along the way. Now, if you don't know who I'm supposed to be today, then you're probably young, really young. <laughs> but actually today I am representing my favorite movie of all time. I've recently decided this, that if I had to be on a desert island with one film and one film only, it would be Little Shop of Horrors by Frank Oz, the 1986 musical. And I've loved it since I was a small child, which is, if you've seen it, you probably know that's probably a little bit of a weird choice for a small child because, you know, it's a plant that eats people and they kill people and uh, it's amazing. It's great. And I recently had the pleasure of seeing the director's cut in the theater, which if you haven't seen that, you definitely need to seek it out. But the reason I am dressed up like this, and quite frankly, this is my new favorite look. I, I seriously could like live in this look every single day. But the reason I'm dressed up is because, as some of you know, I recently had the opportunity to be part of Gallery 1988's Crazy for Cult show in Los Angeles, and we were free to do any cult film inspired piece that we wanted. And I had to take the opportunity to do a tribute to Little Shop of Horrors. So I could not be more excited to share the process with you. And recently this painting came back to me from the gallery and it is seeking a forever home. So I'll give you guys some more details about that uh, near the end of this video. I am so excited to be back with you guys in 2018. I think this is my first new video I'm filming this year, which is crazy. I don't know where the time went. I've just been so busy working and I was traveling and I realized I just hadn't put a video together for you guys in way too long. And I have some very exciting stuff coming up this year. And on my Patreon, I am bringing back my collab contest for the first time in years. But I'll give you guys some more details after we paint this. But if you want to know more about how you can get involved with my collaboration contest, check out my Patreon right there. All right, guys. Well, without further ado, I'm sure you're asking, okay, can we see you get started now? And my response to that would be, sure. So quick poll, I would like to find out how many of you have never heard of or seen Little Shop of Horrors? Please comment below because I'm actually very curious about this. So if you haven't heard of it, this is the 1986 film version that was inspired by the Broadway musical production, which was inspired by a 1960s film. The main plot centers around Seymour Krellborn, played by Rick Moranis, who discovers this strange little plant, which he soon realizes must survive on human blood. Um, so he starts feeding the little plant, and the bigger it gets, the more carnage and killing must ensue. It brings him some notoriety, fame, and success, and he sort of has to decide how he's going to handle that. There's some great other characters. His love interest is a character named Audrey, who's sort of a Marilyn Monroe. She's in an abusive relationship with a sadistic dentist played by Steve Martin, which may be my, one of my favorite, most hysterical characters of all time. I just laugh myself to tears watching his performance in this movie. So um, the movie is directed by Frank Oz, which some of you may be familiar with, who is uh, the voice of Yoda, as it turns out, and actually also Fozzie Bear. And he has such a great, weird sense of humor. And the songs, um, Audrey 2 in particular, which is the name of the plant, is absolutely phenomenal. And I love pretty much everything about this film. It's all um, practical effects, uh, dancing, singing, blood, carnage, and it has everything you could want in a movie. So I highly recommend checking it out if you have not yet seen it. So for my artistic tribute to Little Shop of Horrors, I want to include a piece that captures both Audrey 1 and Audrey 2. And I like some of these scenes of the flower shop, so I may sort of hint at that in the background. And I really love this final scene where Audrey 1 is dressed in her wedding gown, she's ready to marry Seymour, and she gets tricked into going to the flower shop where Audrey 2 nearly swallows her whole. So that's sort of the um, scene that I wanna capture in my piece. So with that concept in mind, I'm gonna move on to doing some sketches. So I'm gonna start with uh, my character of Audrey and then I'm gonna kind of build Audrey 2 and the background behind her. So just trying to get sort of a gesture and a really nice graphic shape, this like bell shape for her wedding dress and her sort of round hair. And then I'm going to, once I have uh, my character illustrated to my liking. I'm going to scan this into Photoshop to work on a value composite um, sketch. So using Photoshop and building a graphic background, 
of the flower shop here, maybe have some graphic roses. And then I'm gonna have Audrey 2 sort of framing Audrey 1 ready to open wide and swallow her whole. So I'm gonna do some rough details. And once I like this in black and white, then I can choose some colors I like. The reason I like to do this is so that I know everything's gonna pop and stand out from one another, and then I can paint color over it last and know that all my values are gonna be working. So from there, I've got my um, hardboard panel ready, and I've spray painted my background color. And off to the left, you can kind of see my little color comp with my little swatches over there that I'm gonna be um, using to create a little paint by number that I made for myself. So you'll see how that works as I move along here. I'm going to be doing a lot of masking and spray painting and before I started I went to the art store and I bought all the colors that I would need and then I spray painted these little color swatches you can see here and that way I'm sure of which color that I'm choosing for each area and I'm really liking this new process because I love graphic um, elements so and I I'm kind of analytical and I really actually enjoy masking and the challenge of doing that. So this is sort of a new signature process for me and it gets everything nice and clean and then I can do all my fun little details on top of my masking. So cross your fingers and let's hope this turns out. So when I peeled off my latest mask, which is the white layer here, I noticed that I made a pretty significant error and I actually had a gap in my mask. So this white line right here is actually spray painted on because I didn't double check. I, I'm doing this really late at night and I was like, oh, I'll just do one more mask before bed. And uh, so the issue is, as you can see back there, I had a perfect gradient already spray painted. So the fact that I ended up with this big white chunk here is uh, kind of devastating at the moment. So my first um, instinct is to gently try and lift it with an X-Acto blade, um, but it doesn't seem like it's working all that great. And I think it's gonna lift up my spray painted gradient underneath. So I'm really, I'm really not quite sure how I'm going to solve this problem unless I completely mask and re-spray paint um, Audrey 2's entire head back there. So I'm going to sleep on this one and then see what I come up with tomorrow. So I'm back here this morning to assess the damage. And last night at 4 in the morning, it seemed like a absolute catastrophe and... I had a few just um, random screams to get out my frustration. Um, but this morning, it's not quite as bad as I remember as I was trying to fall asleep last night, but um, still not happy with it. But I took like my transfer here and I just quickly like sort of tried to see where it's gonna land as far as like the other elements I'm gonna add. And unfortunately, it's like right between like areas that I'm gonna cover. So it's right on the freaking face where it's gonna show. So I'm just, I've decided like not to like overthink this too much and I'm just going to respray it. I, I don't want to, I really don't want to because I feel like I did a pretty good job the first go round, but I think just for time's sake and so I don't like just cause myself more pain. I'm just gonna do it and move forward. So, um, sadly, I'm gonna have to cut a new um, mask and then ugh, I'm gonna have to mask this off now because, but luckily I still have a piece of this somewhere. Um, 
and just repair it. So before I went to bed last night, one smart thing that I did do was um, I sanded this area down a little bit because it was actually like a hole that was, um, it pulled up the layers of spray paint underneath. So it was actually a divot in the piece. Um, I filled it with matte medium uh, a couple of times and I, I used a, um, a business card to just like smooth the medium and just get it down in there. So with my finger, I can barely tell where the, the, the divot is. So that's a good thing. So I've evened out the surface and it's dry. So when I respray it, it should look even. So this is what happens guys, you know, and you just burn the candle at both ends. So, you know, learn a lesson from me. I sound like I haven't slept in like eight weeks. Um, yeah, so I'm just going to try not uh, internally beat myself up too much, and I'm just going to um, move forward, because that's all we can do, and we learn something, and just keep going. So, back a step, forward, three steps, or whatever. Uh, let's go. Okay, here we go, round two. I've cut another mask, and I'm taping off all the areas that I want to protect, and this time I checked it very, very carefully. And then I sprayed another gradient back there, and peeling off the mask... It looks like I actually did a shockingly pretty good job here. And in some ways, I actually like this gradient a bit better. So let's go forth and continue this piece. Crisis averted. So now I'm getting into quite a few layers of masking here and just so that I don't confuse myself I invented a little trick where once I have my frisket on where I want it I can use a blank piece of paper and do a rubbing like um, you used to do like in elementary school so that way I can see exactly where all my masks are and make sure everything's lining up properly and that I don't have any gaps. So now this is the moment of truth and I'm going to reveal layer by layer all my spray paint and hopefully this is going to look like Audrey 2's mouth when this comes out and it looks like it does so I'm pretty excited. So let's take a look at the big reveal. So I'm pretty excited with how clean my mask came out so that's pretty great. And now I'm going to do my final transfer of the details and her face, and then we can start painting the final details on by hand. I posted some in progress shots of this painting I got tons of comments saying oh my gosh you look exactly like this painting I mean I get that a lot people tell me that I look like my art but this one I was like I don't look like that actress I don't look like that um, but then when I dressed up like her today to do my commentary I realized that I look exactly like this so <laughs> it was kind of a funny um, revelation for me I was like I don't know we do share some traits um, and most of my characters end up so always having a little bit of myself in them but I just thought this one was funny because I did get that comment a lot and I was like I don't see it and now I definitely see it so thanks for that a quick and effective lace texture on her wedding dress here I am masking off the surrounding area 
And then I'm going to use this nifty little textured um, stencil that I found at the art store that feels like sort of a fine lace pattern. It, it ended up being absolutely perfect for what I needed. So um, since the dress is already white, I'm actually blotting in with my little sponge here her flesh tone that I have saved in a little pot. And I'm just gonna blot it everywhere where I want the lace pattern. And then you'll see when I lift this off, it um, creates the illusion that the white is actually over her flesh tone. So it's pretty nifty and you can see how quickly I created that fine lace pattern without painstakingly doing it by hand. Okay, you guys, well, my Audrey's are almost finished now. And before I debut the final piece, I want to share the title with you because I'm very excited about it. And the title of my piece is called Don't Feed the Plants, which was actually a song that was cut from the original film and appears in the director's cut. And it is the most incredible, amazing scene. And I wonder if I can just find a little bit of it to show you. I'm not sure if it's online or not, so we'll see. Um, but this I, I don't know if it still holds the record but according to the special features on the film this had the record for the most expensive piece of film that was not used or otherwise it was cut and it is so unfortunate because it is so epic and all these models all these Audrey twos taking over the city is so great um, but for those of you who don't know, the director's cut ending is a much sadder, more somber ending. And it's actually a bit shocking to me to see uh, that ending after I'm so used to uh, the happy ending version. Anyways, so that's just a little nod to the director's cut, which was the original intent of the film. And yeah, so I love this film. I hope you guys do too. If you haven't seen it already, please see it and then come back to this because then you'll appreciate my painting a whole lot more. And if you are a Little Shop of Horrors super fan like I am, I hope you will take one of my prints home with you or um, maybe this original piece. I'm also going to do canvas reproductions and number one is still available. So check out my Etsy shop for that. And you can check out my Etsy shop, of course, for this original and all the signed prints as well. Okay, now for the thing that I really am excited to tell you guys about, and that is the resurrection of Leilani Joy's collaboration contest. And this sort of just occurred to me the other day um, as I was planning my next um, coloring contest on my Patreon. For those of you who don't know, I have a coloring contest club for only $3 a month. You get a coloring page every month and I award great prizes to my favorite entry. And this month I was like, what if we switched it up a little bit again? And I remembered how much fun that we all had when I used to hold my collaboration contest. If you're not familiar with my collaboration contest, you can check out some of my old videos by searching Leilani Joy collaboration contest. But basically I did two versions. I did one version where I did a template that was a very simplistic, um, no details kind of character. And you had to completely invent the character and the scene and everything. And then the second version I did was I had you guys create a background or a character or something that I could work with and I would choose my favorite one to create a finished collab piece with you. So right now if you run over to my Patreon you can vote. I have a poll right now for which one you want to do and then starting I'm going to try and start this March 1st but um, we'll see because I think it's already like the first today but as soon as I can I'm going to launch this contest and you will have till the end of March to get your entry in but you must be be one of my Patreon subscribers. And I am so appreciative to all of you who support me on Patreon. It enables me to do this video, honestly. The, my videos from dressing up to filming to editing are at least a full day, eight hours of work, if not more. And I might get a few pennies from Google AdSense for you watching these videos, but really it's not much. So if you love my videos, you love collabing with me and you'll like all these extras and prizes and giveaways, then please, please, please support me on Patreon. It would mean so much to me. And the best part is this contest, I'm going to give away an original drawing. That's right. So I have not done that yet. I've given away 
prints and canvas reproductions, but for my collab contest, I'm going to give away my one of a kind sketch of Ladybird to a lucky winner. So I cannot wait to see what you guys come up with. So please, please join me over there. Okay guys, now without further ado, I present to you my finished painting entitled Don't Feed the Plants, inspired by Little Shop of Horrors. I hope you guys like it. Let's check it out. <laughs> finished piece looking for a forever home with you preferably somewhere that's green and look it's a two-for-one special you get two Audrey's for the price of one <laughs> really loved creating this piece and I hope you guys enjoyed the process and if you guys want to watch me paint live and ask me questions please start following me over on twitch I'm trying to stream over there and show you guys my art process a little bit more and hopefully I'll have some new videos coming your way very soon. I have quite a few pieces that I have not videoed yet, so hopefully I'm going to get to that. Okay, guys, well, that's it for me on this episode. I'm so glad to be back. I hope you like this one, and I will see you again soon. Bye! Your soul.